Okay YouTube, so we're moving on to some homebrew wine. So one of the reasons for doing it all together is once you have emptied your brewing vessel, you've already you know, got some sterilization stuff on the go from sterilizing the bottles. So you keep that sterilizing fluid, empty out your fermenter, which I'll show you in a minute. Use the sterilizing fluid you'd previously used for the bottles, tip it in your fermenter, saves you mixing another batch of sterilization fluid. Are in the corner of the kitchen, so this is now fully sterilized with the fluid that I had before. This is the spoons, this whole area has been sterilized the spoon, the lid, airlock. And this is what we're doing we're doing a beaver bale, although this is a Shiraz one. And so, easily enough, everything comes in a big box. This is what I would call a double juice box. Basically, what that means is you're going to just get more flavor. Got the instructions, read all the instructions it says. I've done this before, so we've got some preservatives, that happens later. We've got some uh, clearing agent, that happens later. Another clearing agent, that happens later. Some yeast, that happens today. And some oak chips, that happens today. And we've got this big bag of juice, which I'm going to open next. Try not to get it over the kitchen floor. Pop it into there and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so that's what it looks like when we're done. We've still got some juice in there, so I'm about to pour some freshly boiled water in there. And then I'll add it to that. All that's left now is top it up with cold water. Let's take everything off the edge. We want it all to be nicely mixed. We're gonna give this a good stir and I'm gonna add about two liters of boiling water just to help it on its way. We also want the final temperature of this to be around 20 degrees. So we'll get close to the top. We'll see how it's going. I'll boil another kettle of water just now. And we've got a little thermoma bob on this side here. And when it gets filled up, we'll see what temperature we've got. What it looks like when it's filled up, we'll just do a temperature check, 32.3. We probably don't need that other boiling water. But we're going to keep the boiling water on standby because we're going to take this now and we'll lift it from here onto this towel and slide it into the corner. And this is a heating belt that if we need more heat we can wrap it round just to help it get to the target temperature for the yeast to get going to make this grape juice into tasty wine juice. Also, just want to point out a common mistake when home brewing is the whole thing has to be sterile. Now, my hands are clean but they're not necessarily sterile. So what I did in the past, I didn't realize, is I was touching the inside of the container like this as I was tipping it and moving it. So always try, keep your fingers on the outside when you're touching the lid. Don't want to put your finger there, bad. You want it out here. So another home brew tip, you've got to be careful. We need to stir this. So we need to make sure that all the grape juice is dissolved evenly with all the water. Another common mistake is this is your stirring thing. It's all sterilized. I'm only covering my fingers at the very end of that. So when I'm stirring, I'm very mindful that where my fingers are, if that has gone down to, I don't want my fingers to be touching this other part of it. So I'm giving it a good stir. I want it all nicely dissolved. I did end up putting the extra hot water in. I'm just going to check the temperature right now. I'm going to do it twice, 25.8, so it's too hot for the yeast. Sample out with a sterilized vessel, I'm going to drop in the hydrometer and see we now need to get that number. And once, so now we're just finishing up, we've got the oak chips to sprinkle in. Got the yeast. And that wasn't really much of a sprinkle. And now it just gets a stir and then we leave it for 10 days.